May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Of diatribes and punches, of unreasonable behavior and ten temper tantrums. The widow in this morning's gospel is disgruntled. In fact, her gruntle had never been so dissed. <laughs> she is not pleased with the way that things are going. We see evidence of people in this frame of mind, in every walk of life, in every place that we know and inhabit, which only goes to prove, as the old Northern English phrase tells, there's nought so queer as folk, meaning colloquially, nothing is as strange, as odd, as people can be. The widow's actions in this morning's gospel are so similar to our own. Her motivations are significantly different. Different from those of us who get frustrated and annoyed and use pejorative language or even pejorative finger signs when we get trapped in the traffic on the freeway, or when our favorite, favorite sports team are not doing well, or when the iPhone doesn't do what it's meant to do, it doesn't have a jack for the old-fashioned earplugs, or the computer doesn't do what it's meant to do. And so a good old kick is the most effective means of bringing it to its senses. Or the children, or our animal companions, or our partners, don't do what they're meant to do. We can lose our fraying tempers. But it's not quite the case with the widow. Her motivations are more serious and somewhat, in the perspective of life, more important than are trivia. The judge feared not God, nor regardeth man. He's a strange character. The woman, of course, being in the first century of, the palace of Palestine, was an extremely vulnerable individual since she was a widow. She was easy prey to those who would take advantage of her financial straits and her physical vulnerability. She is, quite possibly, up against a wealthy opponent, perhaps even involving, on his part, bribery of someone or other. We don't know precisely from the Gospel text, nor its background, what the details are. What kind of justice she desires of the judge. But despite her weak position, at least in our perceptions, despite that, she wins her cause by sheer persistence, by showing up with some annoying regularity for the judge. There's a hint in the Greek lest she, by her continual coming, weary me. There's a hint in the Greek 
that the word coming actually means that she continues to strike me on the cheek with her fist below my eye continually, time after time after time, which gives a much more, a much more keen insight into the way she was actually going about her business. Sheer persistence, deep realization that prayer, faith, persistence, showing up, responsibility, are not always quite what we expect them to be. We live in such a consumer society that we put our 50 cents or our dollar in the slot machine and out comes the soda. We're used to quick fixes. We're used to getting instant answers. However, faith or Keeping the rumor of God alive in our own age is a question of persisting, a question of showing up, taking responsibility, playing our part. This parish, each of you, all of us, are greater than the sum of our parts. Each of us have gifts and abilities and skills and beauty and elements that we can share with one another as a community. 34 years of being together with one's partner, celebrating a wedding anniversary not so long ago. These are gifts in which we all share but we're so reluctant to share them because, of course, very often in this culture, it's about me, my salvation. Am I saved? Am I washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do I have a personal relationship with Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Well, I'm sorry, but that's got the wrong end of the stick. It's not about my, do I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior? It's not dependent on me knowing. It's dependent on God loving. And of course, God from before the beginning of creation, through creation, through all of history and time, and beyond the consummation of this world, loves us, adores us, longs for us. Just at Los Feliz, here to the east of Hollywood, there is an order of discalced and, um, what's the other word? Father, discalced and enclosed, thank you, enclosed nuns. Tom LeBonge and I used to talk about the order of nuns. They make wonderful bread and cakes and that kind of thing. And we used to say to each other, Tom LeBonge and I, if it weren't for those nuns who are praying there 24-7, seven days a week, four and a bit month, uh, weeks of the month, 12 months of the year, every year of their lives, 24-7, before the Blessed Sacrament at the altar. There is always a nun praying there. If it weren't for them, just imagine the state of what Hollywood might be or become. It is because of faithful, persistent, responsible, committed, devoted, loving mission and ministry from those holy nuns that we are kept on sometimes the borders of civilization. However, I would remind you, Saint Teresa of Avila, 
who was kept yesterday warns us about what do we truly desire in prayer? What do we truly desire in our faith? And she reminds us that more tears are shed over answered prayers than unanswered prayers. More tears are shed over those prayers that are answered than ones that are unanswered. May God give us grace and faith, courage and hope to persevere, to show up, to be part of God's rich tapestry that is this parish of St. Thomas the Apostle Hollywood, the church in this diocese, the church in the Episcopal Church, and the church universal. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.